to the Olympics now, where we have a spoiler alert earmuffs. If you don't want to hear this, but it is good news, the U.S. women's gymnastics team just took home a gold medal without Simone Biles. So U.S. gymnast Suni Lee just won the gold in the individual all-around finals. She beat out Brazilian Rebecca Andrade, extending the U.S. streak of winning every all-around title since 2004. Kenneth Moten joins me live now from Tokyo with more on this. Kenneth, this is just so awesome, especially with so much focus about what happens yeah. now that Simone Biles isn't competing in the all-around. The U.S. is taking home the gold instead. What an amazing accomplishment for Suni Lee here. What can you tell us about her performance and how she and the team are reacting to this. It was dynamic. It was incredible. If you haven't seen it, you got to watch it. I know that in the States, it's probably going to air in prime time. It is a must-see because Suni Lee shined this 18-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota, showing up, showing out there on the gymnastics floor in that all-around. And you mentioned it, Diane. She is the fifth American woman in a row to win the individual all-around. Can I give you some names, Diane, here? Um, it first started with Mary Lou Redden in 1984, but then here are the five. Carly Patterson, 2004. Nasia Lukin, 2008. Gabby Douglas, 2012, who was the first black American woman to win the gold medal in the individual all around at the London Olympics. Simone Biles, you heard of her? GOAT, 2016. And now we got Suni Lee, who is shining a light also on her Hmong community. She's the first Hmong American to uh, join the Olympic team, to make the Olympic team. And then she's the first Hmong American to win gold. How about that? Putting a spotlight on her community there in St. Paul. They have been all over social media, so excited, reacting to this big win. She is a superstar, not only for the Hmong community and the culture, but just overall. And she is the star we're all looking at because as you mentioned there with what happened with Simone Biles, who is cheerleading on her teammates here, rooting for them as well inside that arena. For this to happen for Suni Lee is just incredible. By the way, Diane, apparently she's committed to Auburn. She's still got to go to college. <laughs> well, she's got some bragging rights when she gets there, Kenneth, that's for sure. Uh, meanwhile, Simone Biles has said that she's taking her future at these games one day at a time. So what do we know about how she's doing and whether she'll compete again in Tokyo? Well, as I mentioned, she's supporting her teammates. She is probably the biggest cheerleader, as we know she's the anchor for them. She's a leader for them. They all commented, all her teammates commented and said that she is their best friend. She is someone who's an inspiration to them. She was on social media, Simone Biles, saying the outpouring of this love and support I've received has made me realize I'm more than my accomplishments in gymnastics, which I never truly believed before. Again, there have been some critics who have made some headlines uh, for reacting to Simone Biles pulling out, but there have been more supporters than ever who really have uh, have been have had her back, but I would say that I'm thinking about how they have been louder than the the critics. They have been uh, outnumbering the critics, the love and support that she's getting, and she's getting it from the athletes here in Tokyo. She's getting it from the athletes around the world. She sure is, and. and Kenneth, I hate to pivot to negative news, but the normally dominant U.S. women's soccer team, they haven't looked like themselves so far in these games. So how are they preparing as they now move into the knockout stage of the tournament? You know, we're so used to our soccer team there. <laughs> being the dominant force uh, and it goes right back to what we saw with Simone as well when she had some missteps and we we're like what is going on um, we know that they are putting a lot of attention a lot of focus on their training uh, I don't know if the heat has anything to do with it we don't know if the COVID protocols have anything to do with it because there is so much on these athletes minds when it's time to compete uh, there are so many distractions and as I've reported yes they're used to distractions but this is an Olympics like we've never seen before and so there's a lot of pressure on these teams and when it comes to those team sports 
there's a lot of training that has to go into really being a cohesive group. We see it with the uh, with Team USA basketball and the trouble they have had uh, in these Olympic Games after being a dominant force. And so, yes, Team USA has had a little bit of trouble, some challenges when it comes to these sports that they've typically been dominant in. But it's the Tokyo Olympics. Anything should be uh, is all. When we, I always say expect the unexpected, especially with these games because of what we've seen. Well, that's for sure. Kenneth Moten in Tokyo. Thank you, Kenneth. Let's take a look at the medal count now. Team USA is holding on to that lead, 38 medals overall. 14 of those medals are gold. China is in second place with 31 total medals, and the Russian Olympic Committee is in third with 28. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.